Hello, AP Biology students. Lisa here. This video is designed to help you make your graphs for your enzyme investigation report. This is the Microsoft Excel 2007 file downloaded from our Wikispace. I'll try to make a video showing how to do this in Microsoft Excel 2003 from my home computer. We'll see how that goes. If it shows up on the Wiki, it worked. If it doesn't, it didn't. You only need to make graphs for this report. In playing with this for quite a while now, I think the graphs tell the story beautifully. No need to have the charts and make extra work. You will have five graphs in your report, one for part B, one for part C, D, E, F. Five letters, five graphs. Part A was the baseline. What's a baseline? It's the data set to which you compare the other data sets. Why isn't it just called a control? Baselines can be a little bit arbitrary. It's not what occurs in nature. We've decided, for example, one milliliter of yeast solution, 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. There's nothing inherent about those numbers that makes sense. We just chose them, or it was chosen for us, whatever. That's our baseline. Each group did baseline data. Do not graph this data as a graph of baselines. Do not average this data. Each group will use their baseline data in their other five graphs. I put all of it on here so you could see that we were really close in our groups, in our technique. Elizabeth and Sarah, you were out there. Don't use your data. Use the data that the rest of your group came up with, whatever group number you were in. All right, notice in this chart, I have added in time columns before each of the chunks of data for parts C through F. The B data is not on this file. Your group has its own B data. You need to graph it. You need to make a similar chart and follow the procedure I'm laying out here. If you don't have your group's data, you need to get it. All right. I'm going to graph the temperature first. I need to put my baseline data in here. Well, it falls between 4 and 37. It's like 20 or so. I come up to C with my cursor until the white cross becomes a black arrow. Left click. Go back to the Home tab. Go over to Insert. Position the white arrow on the blue triangle. Left click. Insert sheet columns, left click. Now I have a space for my baseline. I'm going to pretend I'm in group three. Click and drag to select all of the baseline data. No more, no less, exactly the data. Release the click, control X. That is a cut command. Position the cursor where I want that column to sit, control V. That is a paste command. BL3 seems kind of esoteric. I'm going to call it baseline. Esoteric. Nobody would know what BL3 means. Some of you might not even. But a normal, you know, outside person, they're not going to know that. Next, before we make our graph, we need to get rid of this time minutes business. I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard. It's upper right for me. I don't know where it is for you. I'll explain in a moment why we do that. Now, left click and drag to select all the temperature data. No more, no less. Release the left click. Left click on the insert tab. Left click on the line option. Left click on the upper left example. Why a line graph? Line graphs are best for showing trends, including trends over time. The slope of these lines indicates the rate of the reaction. For instance, on this green line, the reaction was going faster here, and then it started to taper off. This one stays fairly constant. It never tapers off. Why is that? Something to think about. Baseline looks goofy now. It should be a temperature. So I come back over here to my chart, and I type in 19 insert symbol degree sign those are all left clicks left click insert if you haven't used the degree sign a lot you'll have to find it start at the top go down one two three four five six seventh row far right degree sign 
and that is Celsius. Hit enter, and look what it did. It changed over here in my legend. I love that. Doesn't take much. All right, we need to work with this. I'd like to make it bigger. I'm going to right click in the chart area, Please puts a blue border around my graph. It also brings up chart tools. Click on design, far right, left click move chart location, left click new sheet, left click OK. It's larger now. I want my X values on the tick marks so it's really easy to see where two is or two and a half. Move this white cursor till you get those words horizontal category axis to appear. Right click. So select format axis and left click. Big box, position axis, left click on tick marks, close. Looking good. Need a chart title. Go to layout, left click. Chart title, graph title. Left click. Above chart, left click. Click in the box. Get rid of unwanted letters. Think of a name that tells what exactly this is about. Effects of temperature on catalase action. It's long, but it tells the story. What is this about? Ta-da! Notice I've only capitalized the first word in the title. That's an APA formatting thing. If I had a proper noun or something like PH in here that needed a capital, I would use it. All right, I need axis labels. Axis titles, right click. Primary horizontal axis, that was a left click, sorry, and this is also a left click. Title below axis. Click in the box, get rid of the letters I don't need. What do these numbers represent? I measured time. In what? Parentheses, M-I-N for minutes, close parentheses. My axis is now labeled, and it has the units. Back to axis titles, left click. Left click vertical, left click rotated title. Click in the box, backspace to get rid of unwanted letters, or delete to get rid of unwanted letters. Capital O, oxygen, P-R-O-D-U-C-E-D, oxygen produced is what I'm measuring on the y-axis in what units? Parentheses, milliliters. Close parentheses. All these elements must be present to get a three on the rubric. If you don't have a title, if you don't have labels, if you don't have units, you are not telling the story clearly. We are now telling the story clearly. How do you bump it to a four? Go above and beyond. Here's what I mean. This 100 degree line is kind of lost down here due to its color and the fact that it's flat. I want to change the color. I'm going to move my cursor over here and I'm left clicking and I saw the box went away that was on the plot area. I had to do that because I want to left or I want to right click on this series 100 degrees Celsius. Right click format data series, left click line color, left click, solid line, left click, color, left click, I want something bright, light blue, close. Click over here so you can see what it looks like. Yes, that line is no longer lost to me, but it kind of conflicts with this blue line. So I'm going to move my arrow cursor till this says series 4 degrees Celsius, right click, left click, Left click, left click, left click. I'm going to pick orange with a left click, close. That communicates above and beyond to me. It just couldn't be any clearer. You can see that at 100 degrees, this enzyme did nothing. 4 degrees, it's constantly working, but it's below how well it works at room temperature. Is that the best temperature? No. It's over twice as reactive. It's over twice as fast at 37 degrees Celsius. But can we just keep going higher and higher and get faster and faster? No. It craters out at 100. Hmm, wait a minute. I don't think we were really at 100. I believe, talking to Elizabeth, we were around 90. I saw the thermometer at 89 and I think she said it went up to 90 or 91. 
you can use 90 or get the correct temperature from Elisa Bet. There's a graph. How do you put it in your report? Well, when the blue border is showing around this, I can right click and left click copy. I can go to my Microsoft document and now I can control V and paste that graph in. If it's too large, make the blue border appear again and then get this double white arrow to appear. Left click and drag to downsize that. This is in the results section of the paper. This is table, actually figure one. Effects of temperature on catalase action. Maybe I want that all in one line, so I'm going to make that a little bigger. Uh, if you grab over here, you're going to distort the graph. All right, back to Excel. This is chart number one. Go back to sheet number one. Let's do the next graph. pH. Where is the baseline in that? I don't know. Uh, we didn't take the pH of a baseline. Well, I need to add in a row and I'm going to add it in around seven because that's neutral. Insert column. Okay, my baseline data is no longer down here. It's this data right here. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy it. Control C. Put the cursor here. Control V. I don't want to rip it out of there because it may change the first graph. Hit enter. 19 degrees Celsius doesn't have much meaning. I'm going to call it baseline. I'm going to make another graph. Get rid of the time minutes. Hit delete. Select all the pH data. No more, no less. Include the baseline. Release. Left click. Left click. Left click. Wahoo. White arrow till it says horizontal category axis. Right click, left click, left click, left click. All right. Uh, move chart location. Left click. New sheet. OK. Did my other chart disappear? No, nope, it's chart one. This is chart two. Yay. Mm, but notice, this goes up to 50, this goes up to 80, and as a result, it looks like 37 degrees has the exact same effect as pH 4, and that's not, or pH 10, and that's not true. I need to change these values. I'm going to move the white arrow to, till it says vertical value axis, right click, left click format axis, Axis options, maximum, click on left click on fixed and change that to 80. That makes that line come down and that's going to fit better um, in terms of comparing it with how this how it worked compared to the temperature. All your graphs need to go up to 80 and you adjust them in just the manner which I demonstrated to you. I, was, I wasn't sure if I was still recording. Sorry, I lost you there for a second. All right, so now you'll end up with chart 1, chart 2, chart 3, chart 4, chart 5 as you make all five of your graphs. When you add your B data, I'll make a column over here for the minutes, and you can put your B data over here so you can make that graph using the same sort of format. Keep track of which numbers are your baseline. Copy them. After you've moved them up here, copy them and paste them in by adding in a column um, to each of these settings. Good luck.